a noble quest to make everybody like 928s. I would say again, but just make everyone like 928s. <laughs> Alright, so this is what I came up with for the front, we'll call it a spoiler, it's not really, the extension of the fender, and it kind of mimics this original rubber spoiler. Um, I would call it a spoiler. Yeah. Yeah. That picture that, that was painted black, or, you know, a right. darker satin color, almost yeah. black, and that matched the rear, kind of make it cohesive. And the, the top plane here is the same height as the rear, the gap's, you know, roughly the same as the player right now, I doesn't spend a lot of time making it perfect, perfect, but... And the idea, my idea is anyway, the air would run down here and jet out around the tires like you'd want. Um, but I'm not 100% sold on it either, and I feel like it's right. something's off, and I don't know what yeah. it is. Yeah, I, I think it might be a little awkward to have that at that angle. Um, but the other thing that I was thinking about was, and, and this would obviously change all that anyway, was maybe from here to there is having a little bit more angle here. I it's, agree. That you know make this less of a frontal plane and yeah I mean and not get, get scallop a little, so much right and not scallop so much in here you right? mean yeah. you mean like a straight so like it'd be like from a straight plane yeah, and then yeah. curve out a little yeah, bit exactly yeah, curve, yeah. Yeah. then maybe just taper it up through yeah yes yeah. all that yep yeah. okay. Okay, so we reworked the front spoiler, I guess we can call it, of the 928 project we're working on right now. And I like this direction. Um, Tony and I came up with this after a lot of deliberation that was not on film. But um, the idea is that air, or the theory anyway, would be that the air would know, go through here, it'd be a splitter, an air dam, and then also act almost like a canard and uh, create downforce, and then the air can jet out the back through here, out around the tire, and I do like how this was. I feel like it's cohesive to the entirety of the car so far, but I'm not 100% sold on it yet. Uh, neither is Tony, but we are we're pretty, we're pretty good on it so far though. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna move off of this now that we have a good direction and then work on the back side of the fender and figure that out so we can get the rest of this side of the car done and then roll on to the rest of the bumpers and all the other details and the spoiler in the back and have the half the car done in place. So then we can then Remake it in metal on the other side. Well, metal and composite, depending on what's going where, but yeah. Tony's back from the office again. Yeah. Woo. To tell oh. me what to do, how to live my life. <laughs> Just kidding. Much nicer being out here than the office. All right. But yeah, like we were talking about, 
Ryan's been working on this, working on the, well, front side of the fender, back side of the fender. Um, right now we're talking about the design on the, the back side of the front fender. Um, so Ryan's been getting some things, uh, beginning to flesh it out, um, get a little bit of an idea where we are. We both, we're both agreed we like, like, we like this line here. Um, and like Ryan said, well, it's just the, the platform, but it's a little flat, a little slab sided. So we're gonna add, bring a little bit of this shape from the fender lip down around and, and carry that through. Um, we're probably gonna seal up this seam here and then we're gonna get this, um, this to match the contour of the fender more closely. And then we will probably carry a little shape from the rocker up into the bottom of this section here. Yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> so it's just a lot more playing with clay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we have, we have the dream job, don't we? Yeah, I think so. Every third grader is like really jealous right now. <laughs> that explains TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> My soul hurts. <laughs> I'm so excited. Now I can't use a plasma cutter on there. So I ran into an issue with the arc droid, and it's not actually with the arc droid itself, it's with our plasma cutter. We have a high frequency start plasma cutter, which I didn't even know is high frequency start, honestly, and they are not really compatible with CNC machines because of the interference it causes the computers. So it looks like we're gonna go and buy a plasma cutter. Yeah. I think we figured it out. Whenever I'm, this is on the table, which is grounded to the same piece that we're cutting, it gets interference and it cuts off. So when I'm holding it though, it has not done that. So let's see if it'll work again consistently. Yep. So basically we just need a shield between this and that. It doesn't be behind your back. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think it's all right, but we can make that adjustment if we need to. Instead, I'd get the, we get the bulk stuff fleshed out and then we start fine tuning. Yep. Yeah. yeah, the tire's very hard to judge off of, given that it's like, you said, a gumball, and the wheel's smaller than the rear wheel. Mm -hmm. It's just for mock-up. We don't have suspension in the car yet. We have suspension, we don't have the new suspension in the car yet. It's not here yet. Yes, yeah, so we have to use our imagination a lot. Imagination. Imagination. <laughs> there we go. A rainbow on the, on the arch there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the perfect SpongeBob reference. Imagination. <laughs> <laughs>
It's like the perfect level. Perfect. It's like the perfect level of warm now. Better use it quick before it gets too warm. So the client's coming in, I don't know. Honestly, so sometime this, this morning to check out his car and now I'm just rushing just to get this last little bit filled because obviously it's not a huge detail piece, but it kind of wraps it all together. So he has not seen anything that we've done since just this segment here you know, in the first video. It's gonna be pretty exciting, I think, for him. Or he'll hate it. Who knows, we'll see. All right, so we're using the Creality CR Scan 01. This is the first 3D scanner I've ever owned. I like it. Um, I'd say it's pretty comparable to like the Revo Point Pop, or whatever Pop it's called. It works for me. Now the software is a little bit hiccupy, but I mean it's proprietary to Creality, and yeah, whatever. So it works. We're gonna 3D scan the quarter panel here to just get the data on the computer and then I can begin working on slicing it down to be buck profiles for the final bucks that we're going to make to then do the metal work with. Um, now the front end, we're gonna make some tweaks too. I'll probably still scan anyway to have the data. Yeah, this, this thing's pretty great. And honestly, I think it's like the cheapest scanner you can get that is decent other than like using your phone. Um, it's definitely higher quality than using like a LiDAR and a newer iPhone or whatever, but I think it, they claim like 0.2 millimeters or something like that accuracy, which is fine for this. So, yeah, let's get scanning. So basically the way this works is it projects as pattern in the blue light onto the object you're scanning. And then it takes images of that and then cross-references all these images that it takes into different angles and converts into a 3D object. So we have the three scans I took that is loosely meshed together in Blender, um, so they're not lined up by any means, just visually for now. Um, you can see that even on the lowest quality settings on the Creality 3 CR Scan 01, I guess I really used, um, it actually does look pretty decent, and I could have bumped with the quality and the frame rate on it and gotten a better image, but the laptop that I was scanning with is absolutely horrible, and it would take it forever and it had issues, so I just did a low quality, because I really wanted to do low quality anyway, just for the general shape. Um, now this computer in here is much, much better, but I didn't want to drag it out in the shop for the scan with right now. So that's the scans. I'll be able to actually layer those on top of an actual 928 model if we wanted to, to do renderings. And then, but yeah, what, what I'm going to really do is, is use this as a guide to each individual box for each panel and then go through that process. So I'm pretty stoked on that. So it came up pretty good. Well. Client came by, we got the rocker done in time, and he was stoked on it. Very happy, yes. Yes. He liked the design. Do you like the design? I like the design. I'm happy with the way this is going. Yep. Yep, you never know until you start actually putting it into the physical universe, 
that your ideas, yes, that your ideas are as good as you think they might be, and then you know you get some material confirmation. Mm -hmm. It is good when the person who is, you know, paying for it actually also confirms. Agrees. It's really good. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. This is. It's yeah. Obviously, art art is relative, but yeah, it worked out. Yeah, now there are some things that we're going to adjust, and these are things that we've already known we are going to adjust, like the front end, in front of the tire up front, where it scoops down and out. It's a little more aggressive than we wanted it to be, it to be because number one, it's not really the most efficient aerodynamically, and we don't have the front splitter made yet that actually wraps around the bumper and changes the bumper yet, so we don't really know the precise angle to run it at, so we're not going to spend time with that quite yet. Right, we'll Especially get that all way. flushed out, then we'll make everything match and flow. Flow. Cohesive. Cohesive. <laughs> if I haven't iterated before, I'm going to say it again. We're going from clay, we're going to 3D scan it, we're going to make some bucks, and then we're going to go from that, we're actually going to form metal that's going to replace all this. And not only that, the panels underneath that I've you know, covered up, they're going to get removed too. We're not just going to like layer it over. This is going to be like an OEM style conversion. I don't know. If you, if you follow along Transformation. with Slant Notes. Transformation. Transformation. Yes. I like that. To say, if you follow along the slant nose, you saw that I actually removed, like even the rear tubs, the wheel wells. I removed them and made my own rooms, weld on the back of the original spot welds and everything. It's just this is the way we do things here. We do it the right way. We don't just bolt things on the outside and cut the arches underneath and call it done. We're this is a full replacement and full complete fabrication. Complete build. Complete build. From concept to completion. <laughs> complete build. Clay. Cohesive. That'd be snapping right now. This is like one of those like poetry slam sessions or whatever. Um, anywho, also we had to decide what other materials we're going to make the other design features out of. Like in the bottom, like the canard up front and the rocker pan pieces down here and the rocker itself. We're going to make them out of steel or aluminum or make molds and do carbon fiber. I'm not really sure yet, honestly. If I'm being honest, they all would work. Yes. It's yeah. It comes down to many different. Uh, we talked about the factors. front, whether or not we were do, what we were material we're using in the spooler. There, we're going to go with something a little more flexible, less rigid than metal, because that's a. <laughs> Listen, I wanted to do a metal lower valence. It's like a, you know, like a BMW 2002 would do or whatever, but it doesn't really make sense. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hark back to the slanters again and say that I got a lot of questions asking why we didn't remake the bumper out of steel or aluminum. It just doesn't make sense to do that. It's gonna get hit. It's gonna, it's High probability weight. of impact with something. Yes. Parking, parking curbs and Pennsylvania roads. I, all, I, all I can think about is this car. We, we, when the client was here, we were just, just joking about how we just think about it in our heads, like all the design right. features and stuff. Like we're laying in bed at night, and it's like, huh. <laughs> this is why I can't sleep. This is why I'm tired right now. I think that Tony does such a great job wrapping up last week's episode i think we should do it the same again this time <laughs> yeah, but we're doing the spot first take so let's do it right now yeah. tony okay. what do you gotta do yeah make sure that you like comment subscribe and eat your vegetables <laughs> wait a minute ryan <laughs> i had corn on my taco today does that count there's there's lettuce there too that's about the extent of my vegetables for the day though but yeah and make sure you check back next week on saturday when we have another update on this build and maybe we'll have the play work done maybe that'd be nice ambitious but it might happen i think it'll happen right. later guys and i will also state too that i'm complaining about soup but if someone said they'd give me 100 bucks to eat a chunk of this i probably would so <laughs> <laughs> my food opinions are completely invalid <laughs> The price went up from $100 to $1,000. I know someone would be <laughs> right, willing, sliding yeah. in my DMs with a $100 mm -hmm. Venmo. And I just will regret that saying that if I don't amend that, so.